Unfortunately, you've grown up hearing voices that incessantly warn of government as nothing more than some separate sinister entity that's at the root of all our problems. It's time to stop submitting to this tyranny. It's time to realize that we're being enslaved. Some of these same vo voices also do their best to gum up the works. They'll warn that tyranny is always lurking just around the corner. Tyranny with a capital T. You should reject these voices. Everything that's been done with torture, rendition, the NDAA, the Patriot Acts 1 and 2, from day one was focused on the American people, period. That's it. It's always been about erasing the Bill of Rights and Constitution and rolling out NSA spying publicly, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, rolling out torture, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, but it's really for the general public, rolling out total control and the end of any underground free market systems in the name of fighting Al-Qaeda, but really shutting down any type of free commerce. This is all about converting us from a free society to a tyranny with a capital T. can he do to me <laughs> or to any of us we have life tenure and we have it precisely so that we will not be influenced by by politics by threats from uh, from anybody what the hell is this it's a sodium message that means Luca Brasi sleeps with the fishes. Associate Justice of the Supreme Court Antonin Scalia was appointed in 1986 by President Ronald Reagan. Scalia served as a safeguard for the Constitution, a staunch opponent to the liberal viewpoint that the Constitution is a living document to be interpreted by progressive demands. Scalia held true to his beliefs as an originalist, meaning the Constitution cannot be changed or misinterpreted unless subjected to the lengthy congressional process of amendment. And also as a textualist, concluding that the ordinary meaning, not an interpretation of the text of the Constitution, should guide its governance. Clearly, this viewpoint counters President Obama's quasi-progressive conquest to fundamentally transform the United States. Obama's violation of the Constitution is a constant, even as he faces a lame duck presidency. But with Scalia gone and the possibility of Obama's free speech assailing lackey, Loretta Lynch, receiving the Supreme Court nomination, Obama could find himself in the driver's seat once again, making tracks down the road to tyranny before his term ends. Scalia's swing vote on the issues, including abortion clinic closures in Texas, a public sector union fair share fee ruling, a University of Texas affirmative action case, and Obamacare's violation of religious freedom via no-cost access to birth control for religious nonprofits were small potatoes compared to the two cases causing the treasonous Obama Obama administration to sweat. First, with Scalia gone, Obama's shielding of four million illegal aliens only needs one conservative vote to sway to the liberal side or an expedited installation of a liberal judge to break the tie that would preserve the lower court's block of Obama's full-on assault of our immigration system. Second, and this is the case that stinks of motive. Obama's clean power plan to regulate carbon emissions. This is Obama's gift to his globalist banker cohorts. The liberal D.C. Circuit Court ruling could serve it up to an Obama-dominated Supreme Court, signed, sealed, and delivered before Obama leaves office. Obama claims he won't use the nuclear option and appoint a justice while the Senate is in recess, although he does have a small window to appoint a temporary replacement. And as we all know, when Obama says he will not do or sign something, that usually means he will. Unfortunately for Obama, though, two years ago, the Supreme Court weakened the president's ability to use the nuclear option power. Upon hearing Scalia's death due to natural causes, most people brushed it off. He was 79 years old. 
But then the fumbling of the details began. Presidio County Judge Cinderella Guevara pronounced Scalia dead due to natural causes without seeing the body or even ordering an autopsy. If you believe that, you, you, we ought to go back to monarchy, that the people are such sheep that they just swallow whatever, whatever they see on television or read in the newspapers. And the highly decorated Vietnam veteran and prized Democratic Party donor and Cibolo Creek Ranch owner John Poindexter continually changed his story until he finally blurted out that Scalia was found with a pillow over his head and the sheets were unwrinkled. The Washington Post reports, quote, William O. Ritchie, a former commander and former head of criminal investigations for D.C. police, wrote, You have a Supreme Court justice who died, not in attendance of a physician. You have a non-homicide trained U.S. marshal tell the justice of the peace that no foul play was observed. You have a justice of the peace pronounce death while not being on the scene and without any medical training opining that the justice died of a heart attack. What medical proof exists of a myocardial infarction? Why not a cerebral hemorrhage? End quote. Any signs of strangulation uncovered by a mandatory standard autopsy, such as petechial hemorrhage, would have sounded off alarm bells. Yet an autopsy of one of the most powerful people in the United States was neglected. Meanwhile, towns like Falfurious, Texas, shell out money they don't have to perform autopsies on illegal aliens. The meager funds that Brooks County accumulates from their property taxes and funds given to them by the state of Texas and not the federal government go here to bury undocumented migrants crossing illegally across the border just 60 miles south, a day's walk to their deaths of dehydration. The effective tax rate cannot exceed 80 cents, and the effective tax rate at that time would have been 97 cents. So we had to reduce our budget by 17 cents because it cannot go over that, and that's by law. Compounded by the amount that we spend, and that, that figure is de dealing with autopsies, it's dealing with the uh, wear and tear of the vehicles, the sheriff's department, the JPs, the magistrates, the death certificates, all the, the paperwork that's entailed, getting out to these areas that are very, very remote. I personally have been taken to pronounce a body when the, police, the sheriff officer with me says, oh, there went the transmission. Currently, it may not appear that Scalia's suspicious end at a West Texas resort amounts to much to the average citizen, 32% of which have never even heard of him, according to a Gallup poll. But in the months to come, if all goes well for Obama by way of a corporocratic faux Republican majority in Congress and Obama's go-it-alone approach to the executive office, Scalia's death will be regarded as the final nail to be driven into the Federal Republic of the United States as Obama transforms the United States into a unitary republic, legally ruled by an all-powerful central government. John Bound for InfoWars.com. Oh.